Optimization problems in calculus can be kind of tough sometimes. There's a lot of things to figure out when you're looking at these kinds of problems. So I wanted to show you this clip from my weekly live stream this past week, which I'm doing every Monday night at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, where we had to find two numbers whose product is 100 and whose sum is a minimum. I thought this was a great example of optimization problems, and you can actually use this same process to solve pretty much any optimization problem you're gonna run into. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the example. So like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, when you are doing an optimization problem, there's really just five basic steps that you want to follow every single time. And like I also mentioned, the second step can sometimes be skipped depending on what the problem is and what information uh, you have. So let's go ahead and, and use this as an example to go over how to solve optimization problems. So. Really an optimization problem is one where you're just given some sort of situation, whether it's like a geometric shape and how that has to be built, um, you know, with certain restrictions of perimeter or area or something like that. Or if you're given, in this case, we have these two numbers, which we need to find. So we need to find two numbers whose product is 100 and whose sum is a minimum. So there's always gonna be some sort of uh, situation or some sort of relationship between numbers or side lengths of a geometric shape or something like that where we are trying to minimize or maximize so that's what makes them optimization problems is we're trying to optimize how we're able to create a shape or path you know through a river or something like that or a combination of two numbers that has the maximum or minimum of a certain condition so in this case we want to minimize the sum. We're trying to make sure the sum of these two numbers that we're trying to find is a minimum. So let's let's talk about the steps that we kind of want to go through. First thing we want to do is just read the problem. And this seems a little obvious, but trust me, it is important to take a step back and, and actively think about this stuff before you just jump into the problem, because if not, you're, you may get lost. Um, it, it's definitely easy to get lost if you don't think about kind of where you're going. So the first thing we want to do is just read the problem and make sure we understand what it's saying and figure out what we're actually looking for and what information we are actually given. So let's think about what the question's asking us. We're trying to find two numbers. So right off the bat, we know our objective here is to find two numbers, right? We have some information about their product. We know their product is 100. And we have some information about what we're trying to achieve with these two numbers. We're trying to make sure their sum is a minimum. So those are kind of three main things right off the bat that we know the question is giving us and asking us to figure something out about. So let's kind of think about what this means uh, mathematically and actually kind of writing out what we're looking for and what we have. So we know we're looking for two numbers. So it doesn't really matter what you want to call those numbers. Let's just say we're looking for two numbers, X and Y. We know their product needs to be 100 and that their sum is going to be minimized. So those are kind of the two things we want to keep in the back of our head as we go on to the next steps here. Okay. So I do have kind of written down here the steps we want to go through. So we want to, we understand the problem. We have an idea of what we know and what we're trying to find. The next thing you typically would want to do is draw a picture of the situation. Now, this is the step that a lot of times you can skip because this is going to be applicable when you're given some sort of a description of some physical thing that's going on or some geometric shape that you can draw. In this case, we just know that we have two numbers. So really writing X and Y as the two numbers is pretty much all we can really do. There isn't really gonna be any sort of um, you know picture we could draw with this. So the next thing that we wanna think about, the third step is going to be to write out our equations. Now, there's always gonna be I shouldn't say always, there's generally going to be two equations that we want to figure out. First of all, we need to write an equation for the thing that we're trying to optimize. So a lot of times, you know, you can just think of this as some unknown quantity, whether it's a perimeter, a product, a, an area of a shape, uh, a time that you're spent traveling, whatever you're trying to optimize. So in this case, the thing that we're trying to optimize is the sum. We're trying to make sure the sum of these two numbers is a minimum. Whatever you need to make a maximum or a minimum is going to be what you want to optimize. So let's just call this quantity Q. 
and this is the thing that we want to optimize. Well, how do we how do we write the sum of these two numbers? Well, the sum of two numbers literally just means the first number plus the second number. So really, this quantity, this thing that we're trying to optimize or minimize in this case is just x plus y, our two numbers being added together. So that's our first equation. The second equation we need to figure out is what is our restriction? And it is possible, you know, there could be more than one restriction acting on this situation. In this case, really, the only other information we're given is that their product is 100. So we know that the product of x and y, x times y, the product of these two numbers, has to be 100, All right? So we just use this piece of information that we're given to create our restriction equation. So that's it, these are our two equations. That's it really for the third step, in fact. So then what we need to do in our, our fourth step is going to be, uh, it's kind of a two-part step. First, what we wanna do is we're gonna take our restriction equation. So the, just this equation here that just relates x and y to some number. It is the thing that is restricting x and y they have to be they have to meet this condition of multiplying to 100 and what you want to do is solve this equation for one of your variables either x or y in this case it's not really going to matter which you do in most cases it's not going to matter uh, in some cases one may be easier than the other but you should be able to get to your answer either way um, if you want to kind of think ahead and figure out which one might be easier that certainly could help can't hurt um, but if you really have a hard time doing that and you want to just pick one and go with it and see what happens, um, you should be OK. And if you're not, you can go back and solve for the other one and try that instead. Either way, you're going to want to do that. Um, you know, one variable or the other is what you want to solve for. It doesn't really uh, if you have to come back and try the other way. Sometimes that happens. That's part of math. Sometimes you got to just try stuff and see if it works. And if it doesn't come back and try something different. But in this case, I can tell you it's not going to be easier or harder to solve for x or y. So let's just go ahead and solve for y. So to get the x over to the other side of the equation, we would just divide both sides by x. The x is going to cancel there and we're just going to get y equals 100 over x. Okay, so the second part of this fourth step, I said it's a kind of a two parter step is to take this y that we just solved for. So we know 100 over x is the same as y. And you're going to plug that into your optimization equation for the variable you just solved for. So since we know that Q equals X plus Y and we know Y equals 100 over X, we can actually say that Q equals X plus 100 over X instead. So now we have this other equation, Q equals X plus 100 over X. And this is kind of our new optimization equation. This is the new equation that we want to optimize. And that is exactly what the fifth step is. So the fifth step is going to be to solve or optimize this equation. So remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure the sum is a minimum. So basically we want to make sure that this sum, this Q, this quantity that we came up with is as small as possible. Well, to do that, what you want to think about is how do you figure out where a function is as small as possible? Well, it's usually going to mean that you want to find the critical numbers and test those to figure out if they're maximums or minimums. In this case, uh, it's going to be exactly that. So we're just going to take this quantity, which we'll just say is our new function f of x. And we want to find its derivative because this is this is how you find critical numbers, right? You just take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So to take this derivative, what I'm actually gonna do is instead of thinking of this as x plus 100 over x, think of it as x plus 100 x to the negative one. So 100 over x is the same as x times, or 100 times x to the negative one. x to the negative one is the same as one over x. So instead of finding this derivative, we can actually find this one because these two things are equal. Well, the reason why we want to do that is because we can use power rule to find this derivative. So the derivative of this first term here, x, is just 1. And then the derivative of the second term here, we're going to do the power rule. So bring our negative 1 down in front, which makes it negative 100. And then we're going to lower our power by 1. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So then since we're trying to find the critical numbers, we set this derivative equal to 0. And now at this point, I am going to switch this back to... 100 over x squared because now that we've taken the derivative 
this algebraically is going to be an easier equation to actually solve for x. So to get x all by itself now, we can minus one from both sides. Then we can multiply both sides by x squared because it's usually a good idea when you have uh, fractions like this to kind of think about how we can get stuff all on one level or like all on one line. Fractions kind of make things harder to solve usually. Even though that didn't do anything really to get our x by itself, it got rid of the fraction, so it's helpful. Okay, then multiply both sides by negative one. That's basically just gonna cancel the negative on both sides. And then square root that, and then square root that. But do keep in mind, whenever you square root both sides of an equation like this, you always need to take the positive and negative square root. So actually we would, we would wanna do plus and minus square root of 100. So x would equal plus or minus 10. However, you know, one thing you wanna think about with that, a lot of times with these problems, the problem may say we need to find two positive numbers or maybe two negative numbers. In this case, it doesn't specify. It just says find two numbers whose product is 100 and whose sum is a minimum. Um, so it seems like there's not really gonna be a restriction on x being positive or negative. So we do wanna consider x equals positive 10 and x equals negative 10. So what we wanna do from there is keep this fact in mind right here. We know y equals 100 over x. So if we're trying to find y, because remember, we do need to find two numbers. We know that, well, first of all, x can be 10 or x can be negative 10. But we also know that y equals 100 over x. So as a result, if x equals 10, y would just be 100 over 10, which is 10. And if x were negative 10, then y would be 100 over negative 10, which is negative 10. So these are two you know, potential, cr essentially critical numbers. Um, you know, Really what we'd wanna think about is going back to this original function here, this quantity that we're trying to minimize, if we consider these two critical numbers, x equals 10 and x equals negative 10, which of those would make this a minimum versus a maximum? Well, just quickly plugging them in, we can see that plugging in x equals negative 10 is gonna give us a negative number, and plugging in x equals positive 10 is gonna give us a positive number. So, you know, without doing further testing, you definitely could do the first derivative test or second derivative test to confirm. Um, but just to kind of speed things up here, if we were to actually confirm that, what we would confirm is that x equals negative 10 is actually a minimum and x equals positive 10 is actually a maximum. So we don't wanna use this one because that makes their sum as big as possible. And what we were trying to do was make their sum a minimum, so make it as small as possible. So we know that this is gonna be the two numbers that give us a product of 100. So x times y equals 100, because negative 10 times negative 10 gives us positive 100. And their sum is as small as possible. So their sum is gonna be negative 10 plus negative 10 is negative 20. So just to recap here, here's the steps if you wanna jot these down. If you want to push pause and jot these down real quick, um, you can pretty much use these, these steps really for any optimization problem. So that should help make really all of them a lot easier. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below and that subscribe button too while you're down there. Like I said, this video I did in my weekly live stream, which I'm doing every Monday night at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. So be sure to join us next week. Hit that subscribe button so you're notified when I'm going live and I hope to see you there.